Hello, this is Dr. Todd Grande. Welcome to my video on t-tests. We'll be looking at a couple types of t-tests. Uh, specifically, we'll be looking at the one sample t-test and the independent samples t-test. So I have here an SPSS data set and it's fictitious data. So I'm going to describe the research design behind it and then show you how to apply both of those statistics. So in our first uh, column here we have treatment and treatment has two levels. We have control, there's 45 participants in control, and depression treatment. There's 45 participants there, a total of 90 participants. Now this is the label. Uh, you can switch to the uh, precise value that SPSS holds by hitting the A1 um, menu selection up on the top bar. So this is how it looks to SPSS, 0 and 1. And you can see the labels by clicking on that button. So then we have um, a test that was administered, a uh, post-test, uh, depression level, so, so an instrument to measure depression level, okay, with a lower number, meaning uh, the individual is less symptomatic as related to depression symptoms, and then an anxiety level instrument uh, that works the same way. So you might collect data in this way, uh, perhaps to see if uh, a depression treatment also works with anxiety. So if you can establish that it works with depression, uh, you might also want to test and see if it works with anxiety. So that might be one reason you'll collect data and format it in this way, using this particular research design. So let's take a look at how we'd apply a, a t-test, a one sample t-test to this data. So it's important to understand regarding a one sample t-test that it cannot distinguish between groups. So in this design, we have a control group and a depression treatment group, but a one sample t-test will not be able to distinguish differences between those groups. Rather, it'll be able to distinguish the difference between a selected dependent variable, either the depression level or the anxiety, and a mean that you specify. So say on this instrument we know that the mean is 50. Let's say it's a t-score, so the mean is 50. So in a one sample, this is a one sample t-test, Let's see, I'll, I'll put this back to default. You're going to test first, say, depression level. So you move that over to the test variable. And we're going to set the mean at 50. And the alpha will stay at uh, 0 0.05. So the confidence interval percentage will be 95. Run the statistic. And you can see it's fairly straightforward uh, output, right? You have the uh, sample size, which is 90. You have the mean for the entire sample. So this is both uh, levels of the independent variable, both the control and the depression treatment. It's taken all together for one sample. And here you have depression level uh, versus the mean, which you set at 50, and you can see it is significant. So there's a significant difference between the mean of depression level and the value that you supplied, which is 50. So let's take a look now at how you'd use an independent samples t-test with this data. So an independent samples t-test can tell you, or actually does tell you, about differences between two groups. So it's going to look a little different. So I'll reset this back to default. So let's start with depression again. So we're going to um, put depression as the test variable, the dependent variable, and group, which is the independent variable, will be the grouping variable. Now you see it's not going to let you continue until you define the groups, which is very straightforward. Uh, group 1 is 0 and group 2 is 1. 
continue, and it's going to load that. Again, 95% confidence interval. And hit OK. So the output, the output here is a little more complex. You have now two levels of the independent variable. You have the control group and the depression treatment group. You have 45 in each group, and you can see here the mean. You can see the mean is higher for the control group. Uh, without looking beyond this table, you don't know if it's statistically significantly uh, higher, the, the control over the depression, but you know there is a difference. So moving down to the, in the actual independent samples test, you can see here that you have two rows that you can read from. One is equal variances assumed, and the other is equal variances not assumed. And you see over here uh, the results for Levine's test for equality of variances. Now Levine's test tests the null hypothesis that the population variances are equal. So if we're going to use the equal variances assumed data, we want this to be non-significant, meaning we would accept the null hypothesis. If this were uh, below 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis, and we would use this row here, which is equal variances not assumed. So you can see in this case, at 0.228, we would accept the null hypothesis and assume there is homogeneity of variance, also called homoscedasticity. And here it's just called equal variances assumed. right? And you have here the significance for the t-test, 0.015. Now, in this case, you see it's, there's very little difference. I mean, there's, there's no difference on the significance uh, at least at three decimal places for equal variance is not assumed. Uh, but sometimes these values are different. So you do have to check Levine's test before you can choose which category uh, of data to interpret. So what this tells us is there is a statistically significant difference uh, in terms of the means from the control to the depression treatment. So let's go back to data view and run the same analysis using the anxiety level. Now right away you can see here that in this particular case the depression treatment group actually had a higher experience of anxiety than did the control. So that, that kind of gives you a clue going in before you even interpret the, the actual t-test of what you might find. And here you can see we have a significant Levine's. So significant Levine's mean we reject the null hypothesis. So it's equal variances not assumed. The variances are not homogeneous. And so as we look at uh, the, the t-test, the significance level, you can see they are different in this case at uh, three places right of the decimal, it's 0.232. So it's not statistically significant. So for depression at 0.015, these two groups, control and depression treatment groups, uh, there was a statistically significant difference between them, but for anxiety, there's not. Here we would accept the null hypothesis, which says that there is no difference between the two groups. I hope this uh, description of the one sample t-test and the independent samples t-test was helpful to you. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.